How about you? Welcome to Hamiltonville Farm. Today I'm going to show you how I grease my 4540. Uh, the greasing process is essentially the same on every tractor, but I'll show you where the Zerk fittings are and all this for the 4540. It's applicable to the 4550 as well. And so let's get started. I'll show you how I do it. Before I show you where the grease fittings are and the Zerks are, I'll tell you that the grease you choose really is dependent on your temperature. Your temperature of the climate that you're in, be it in the northwest of the United States or a hot, dry climate somewhere else around the world, whatever that may be, um, you need to make sure that the grease you choose to put in your tractor is uh, rated for the temperature or the climate that you live in and you operate your tractor in. So just keep that in mind. Let me show you the grease I use. I personally use the Mahindra Pro Red All Season Multi Purpose Grease. Uh, that's the one that my dealer sells, and the, that's the one that is recommended for us here in uh, my climate. And, you know, like I said, you can use whatever grease that is appropriate for whatever climate you're working in. And I'm not a spokesman for Mahindra, I'm not a I'm not sponsored by Mahindra, so, uh, but I do think that their products are pretty good. That's why I make these videos. Anyway, I use Mahindra Pro Red Grease. That's what I use. Something I bought off Amazon is a 150-piece grease fitting cap assortment. This one here is from Swordfish. It contains three popular sizes, M6, M8, and M10. Uh, you'll see me when I start to show you where the grease fittings are, where these, how these help you identify. I got green blue and red they come in yellow and things like that but i wanted something that was highly fluorescent that i could see now as you work in your field these things are going to come off that's why you got to buy 150 of them and just kind of replace them as you go but they help keep your uh, grease fittings clean they help identify some of the tough spots and uh, so i recommend getting some of these and it doesn't have to be uh, this particular brand but there's some that will and you're going to need all three different sizes as well because some some are uh, bigger than others but get you some grease fitting cap covers and it'll really help you identify and protect your grease fitting. I apply the grease using just a standard pistol grip uh, grease gun but what I've done is I, I've attached a locking lube onto my grease gun this thing saves you a ton of time and I'll put a link to a video that I've done about, uh, I'll review the locking lube and I'll put a link up here in the, in the corner here so you can go check that video out. But the locking lube, I highly recommend one. It'll make your life so much easier and it helps, it really helps a lot to get your tractor greased up pretty quick. Again, I'm, you know, just like I'm not sponsored by, I'm not sponsored by anybody, maybe. <laughs> so if your company's out there want to sponsor me, come on, call me. Anyway, so these uh, locking lubes, they're the way to go. And last but not least of the things you're going to need is your operator's manual for your tractor. All right, inside the 4540-4550 manual, it has a chart of where all your Zerk fittings are and what to use on them. I've got some little handwritten notes in mind about what lubricants to use and things like that. As a rookie, as a rookie uh, tractor owner, I made sure that I took plenty of good notes. So use the operator's manual the way they intended it to be used and it'll help you uh, get your tractor greased up pretty good. Let's get started and let me show you where all these grease fittings are. What I like to do when I start greasing my tractor is start as if I'm sitting on the driver's seat and I look down to my left hand side, my left foot, and I see my four wheel drive lever. Well, if I go through the floorboard and follow that lever, there's number one with the blue Zerk cap fitting on it. The four wheel drive lever indicator we'll call number one. As we go forward, the dual clutch linkage, you can see a red Zerk fitting there. We'll call that number two. I'll show you where it's in relationship. It's on the left hand side of the engine. All right. Now let's just keep working our way up toward the front of the motor and let's start looking toward the axle and the pillow block area. This one here on the front is number three, what I call number three. I obviously need to replace the Zerk cap on that one. I'll do that here shortly. Sure. 
And on the back side of the axle, you have this one here. On the aft side of the, I think they call that the pillow block, if I'm not mistaken. As you leave the aft pillow block, go back toward the driver's seat and look directly behind your hydraulic suction filter. If you look, you can see I've got a red Zerk cap fitting on there. That's your anti-friction, maybe a seize bearing or something, I think they call it. Anyway, so it's right behind your hydraulic suction filter. And you can, it's highlighted there in the red. Moving away from the anti-friction bearing, all you have to simply do is follow the brake pedals, the linkage for the brake pedals, all the way to the back side toward the back tire, and you get to six, seven, and eight. There's three here. There's one. Oops, sorry about that. And can you see the other red cap there? That's two. So that's six and seven. And then follow it on up here to the differential lock where the sun is in your eye. And that's eight. Sorry about the lighting there. So I come back, there you go. See the red dot? This one you can see okay, but just be real careful not to miss, be real careful not to miss that one back there. There's actually two on that post. All right. As you move to the back side of the tractor, we'll call these number nine and 10. Number nine is located on your adjustable linkage arm. You can see I've got a blue cap cover on it. And then number 10 is your top link dessert fitting on the top link. We'll call that number 10. We've got two more to look at. Back on the left side of the tractor, this is our the left back tire here on the right side of the picture. You come back down to the bottom, you can see I've got a red Zerk fitting on this fitting there. And now, remember how I told you the, remember how I told you the hydraulic suction filter uh, grease fitting was hard to find? Well, there's another one hard to find too, and that's for the clutch. Not the clutch, not the dual clutch, but the clutch fitting. So let me show you that one here. Number 12 is on your clutch. Back there, I've got a red cap cover on it. This is where it's at in relationship to your four-wheel drive lever. You can kind of see the red cap in this picture in relationship to your four-wheel drive lever indicator. So that's the 12 grease fittings. Here, but you, if you don't know what, that thing's hard to find, to be honest with you. But that's your clutch. There will be more grease fittings if you have a front end loader or if you have attachments, uh, the implements that require grease, like your grapples, your backhoes, your PTO shafts, your augers, all that stuff has a grease fitting on it. You need to learn where those grease fittings are uh, for the implements that you have. And again, for your front end loaders, you have these, I think there's 16 total, there's eight on each side. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What about that, huh? Off the top of my head, eight on each side. So just look for these on the Mahindra, look for these uh, Zerk fittings on your front end loader. There's uh, four across the top here and then four clumped together down there at the bottom. All right, so let's go actually put the grease into the tractor. I mentioned earlier in the video about the lock and lube. You know, it's a really great product. Uh, you can buy it off Amazon. You can go to a couple, if you subscribe to some of these bigger channels who are Amazon affiliates, just they probably have a link to it as well. So go, I know Outdoors with the Morgans, I, I, that's actually where I bought mine and uh, from his Amazon affiliate link, but I'm sure there's others. Also, so I'll show you this, but you know, I, I put a link up earlier about the, where you could buy or the video I did for the review, but also I did a video for the 50 hour service um, you can watch that video and that 50 hour service was for the 4540, 4550 on the tractor. So if you're liking these videos, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. We'd appreciate it. But let me show you how I uh, plug in this grease here. All right. So you just simply take the locking lube and any other grease gun that you have for the fitting, place it onto the Zerk fitting 
like so. And I have a pistol grip here, and I just squeeze, I just insert the, the grease that way. Let me show you what to look for to make sure you have enough grease. As you insert grease into the zerk fitting, I want you to pay close attention to where the black and the red meet over in this area here. All right, watch this. Uh, as, as I put, pack grease in, see how the grease, especially in this area here, is expanding? Watch this. Just like so. That's how you know you got enough grease in it. I, that was literally, I did three pumps. So it doesn't take much, especially if you keep your machine greased at all times. Now I'm only showing you that one grease fitting that I did because they're all the same. You plug, your Zerk, uh, you plug your grease gun onto the Zerk fitting and you pump two, three, four times, something like that, and you, you got grease in it, all right? Uh, grease guns can be kind of tricky when you're putting a new tube of grease in it. Sometimes air gets caught in that. So just keep working, playing around with it uh, to get that air out of there. But uh, the process is the same for every single fitting that you go to. So put, it up, put the, the grease gun onto the fitting, give it three or four pumps. If you can see, uh, most of the time, I think on every one of them, you can see the grease come out and you know you got enough. A couple things, a couple key things to remember, as I stated earlier, um, on your tractor, on the implements and things, for every about eight hours, about every eight hours of use, I guess it would be, eight to ten hours of use, grease your equipment. Some people grease them every day, some people grease them every week, whatever. Some people don't grease them at all, right? And I know a few guys like that, and that's, that is not good for your tractor. You want your tractor to last a long time, keep your schedule maintenance up, keep your preventative maintenance up, and your tractor will last you forever. Thanks a lot for watching the video. We appreciate it. There's going to be a picture of the barn pop up here. We'd love for you to hit that. Subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. If you, know, if you have friends that have tractors, if you have friends that like homesteading or hobby farm videos, let them know about us and we would appreciate all the help we can get. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Hamiltonville Farm. Go over there and like us, follow us, subscribe. All right, y'all take care. We'll see you on the next video.